Daniel Radcliffe, no stranger to magic. After all, he played the role of Harry in the iconic Potter series. Well, now he's back on the big screen as a villain, actually, kind of, in the sequel, Now You See Me Too, where he plays Walter Mabry, who has recruited the four horsemen to steal a valuable computer chip that could potentially rule the world. Take a look. Why would I buy it when I can have you steal it for me? Oh. It's being previewed tomorrow to the various suitors. So how your team gets by security, that's up to you. But uh, once you do, you just need to inspect it and steal it. That's it? Now, come on, this is perfect for you, isn't it? You're magicians and thieves. What makes you think we would even consider doing this? Um, oh, wait, I had a reason. What was it? Oh, yes. If you don't, I'll have you killed. Hey, Daniel, how are you? Good to see you. <laughs> Good, thank you very much. I'll get to the villain part in a second. Sure. Can I just tell you, I love magic. Cool, yeah. I, no. Were you a fan as a kid? God, yeah, I had, I had, a, I had this thing called, like a, I think it was called a Marvin's Magic, like Junior Magic it's set. It's like 1999. Just like, yeah, just tried trying desperately to get good at that stuff and then like on the on the potter set there was like uh, there were people that would like teach us tricks so i managed to like come out of those films with a few a few tricks but the big difference here when you when you look at potter magic versus this potter magic mostly yes. special effects yes and this you and the other cast members you less but the other cast yeah. members more actually practice real tricks oh yeah no i mean dave dave franco is is legitimately amazing at the stuff he does in the film um it's and yeah and just to like have a job where you get to go like this sequence is amazing like, I love this all the idea of like sleight of hand being used to, to steal stuff is just so cool and um, yeah I just we were all on set with these amazing magicians who would like give us lessons which what, like what kind of a job is that the limit of my magical talent is when I pull the penny out of my kid's ear and they're 15 and they still don't get That's a how great I do trick. that. It's not bad, right? It's really good. You just, the, the oldies are the classics. You Talk know? a little bit about the character here. I call him a villain. Do, do you go out after being known as the good guy and the fun protagonist? protagonist. Do you go out looking for a role like this? Um, I think it definitely sort of fulfills uh, a long-held ambition to like play a sort of classic British bad guy. Like there's a rich tradition of, of, of Brits being bad guys and so I've always wanted to do that. Um, I'm not sure if it's something I'll be doing all the time but the chance to get to do it with this kind of cast around you like Mark Ruffalo and Jesse who you see there and but like Woody and, and Michael Caine and like, all these incredible actors was just like too good to pass up. Things are really going well for you. I mean, Thank nobody you, yeah. had any doubt about that you know, <laughs> over the last several years, but you have another movie coming out, Swiss Army Man. Man. Yes. You play a dead guy. Yes. How hard is that? How hard can that be? Um, no, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 harder than you think, I hope. You don't um, just lay there. Yeah, I don't, everyone's just kind of, well, we did, one of the things we wanted to do in the movie, like, I don't talk for, like, the first 10, 15 minutes. We, we really wanted to push it to the point where audiences are like, why did he do this film? Um, and But then it, it turns into, yeah, it's like a gross, funny buddy comedy between... The role reveals itself. Yeah, I do I do, do more than just lay there. And uh, it's myself and Paul Dano, and uh, he, we, we, he, we play like best friends, just one of us is dead. And I talk about how, good thing, how well things are going. You're also about to do another play in New York. Yeah. And the fascinating part about this is the play changes every single night because you ask for audience participation. Yeah, there is a, there's a certain amount of sort of audience um, in, interaction. Um, you, you will be encouraged, uh, unlike every other theater, to uh, keep your phones turned on for the duration of the performance. Um, the show's called uh, Privacy, or Privacy, I would say. Um, <laughs> but uh, but it's, and it's, it's really, I think it could be something very, very special and fun. We've got a Potter prequel movie coming up. We've got yes. a play going in London. Yep. Have you emotionally been able able to just kind of remove yourself from that whole phenomenon at this stage? I'm not, it's not that I'm like unemotional about it at all, but um, I don't, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I'll be, I'm, I'm sort of now in a strange position of everyone assumes that I know a lot or have a lot of information or, you know, I'm going to be very involved in these things, but like I'm, I'm genuinely not, like I, I wish them nothing but obviously success, I'm sure they'll be great. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of like finding out with everyone else You're now. You're a spectator with the rest of yeah, us. Yeah, absolutely. Things going great. So nice to Thank see you, Thank you so Daniel. much. What a pleasure. Good. Thank you. Andrew. And I want to tell people that Now You See Me Too hits theaters June. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there. And click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.